Popeye Weekly Allowancers. Today we're taking a look at Popeye and Bluto's Stormy Seas Ahead Deluxe Box Set from Mezco. Now I've seen the Popeye before in other reviews and he looks awesome. It's very, very strange that this exists. I didn't really know that Popeye was a character that still existed in the public consciousness. And if Popeye doesn't, Bluto definitely doesn't. But anyway, this is a huge box. It's very heavy. I'm guessing most of that mass belongs to Bluto because he's swole. The back has some really cool kind of vintage comic booky art of the two characters. Popeye's looking awfully smug. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get right into it. I don't know how to, where to, where do you open? How? Don't know. Bottom? Gently, gently, oh no, I'm hurting the box. Maybe opening from the bottom, not such a good idea. It's worked well for me so far. Okay, wow. Looks like I opened it from the back. And there we have it. There's our two boys. There's a lot of different clamshells in here, so I'm just gonna disassemble them for now so nothing falls over. More clamshells in the back. Yeah, the weight of this, it's definitely all Bluto. Oh hey, guess how many months later it is after I opened the package? It's been a while. You see, normal people would unbox their action figures and then take a look at them um, all in one go. I like to open them up and just leave them sitting around for six or so weeks and then do the review because why not make it more stressful and difficult on me? Myself. Anyway, we got these out. We're gonna start with Bluto. He is so heavy. This is probably the heaviest Mezco that we've ever gotten. Man, he is a beefy boy. Whose idea was this? Someone at Mezco just wake up one day and was like, we need to make Popeye and Bluto. Make them kind of realistic. Make it creepy. And then they did it. Take his head off and look at the sculpt. It's just a really disturbingly good sculpt and really disturbingly good in applications. Like this is a cartoon character, but his skin looks real and textured. You can see the veins. You can see some blotches and darkening of certain parts of the skin. And his fingernails are painted all dirty and grimy. <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, I really love this, but on the other hand, I'm just so confused. I'm jumping ahead a little bit to soft goods, but I really love this button detail. It's a really nice touch. This is interesting. The belt actually has the belt loops sculpted on instead of being part of the soft goods. So that is a whole separate part. I guess that cuts down on the possibility of belt loops snapping if they were actually made of fabric. Crazy good texture on the shoes, leathery shoes, and each individual rivet is painted silver. And you can even see the texture in the shoelaces. Man, look at that beefy calf. Gross. And even the cloth goods have some paint and texture on them. It looks like there's been some dirt spread on them, like he's gotten into a fight. Really white teeth. Really nice for an old-timey sailor. I don't think anyone's teeth are this nice. Maybe he got veneers. Yeah, so Bluto's just a heckin' chonky boy. Joints are stiff. I'm sure there's just a massive joint under there, so it's kind of a little limiting in that way. And the cloth goods, too, impede movement a little bit. Can't look up very far because he's got a giant thick neck. Can do chin to chest pretty good, though. Not a lot of crunch. This character is just one that's not going to move much. He's just so bulky and huge. He comes with an alternate head that's been beat up. You just take that head off, stick that one on. It's that simple. He doesn't really have a neck, so it's pretty easy. There's this cap that has a magnet in it, and you can just stick it on his little head. Oh, his teeth aren't very nice anymore. As for hands, he comes with a set of grabbing hands, a set of fists, and a set of holding things hands. He also comes with a hook, a wrench, and a kettle ball. These two items are actually made of metal. They are heavy. I want him to lift something, so I'll switch out the hands. As with the head, it's not a problem switching out the hands because the joints are so huge, you just pop them off and pop them on. Let's do the kettleball. Can he actually hold it? Yep, despite the weight of this thing, he can't hold it. He himself is very sturdy, very rigid, so that's not too surprising to me. The inside of this cap looks like it's exactly sculpted to fit on the hair, but it doesn't really fit exactly. It's kind of hovering a little bit, and I think that's just because the magnet isn't recessed enough. And the last thing that Bluto comes with is this sweet jacket. Look at that, that is nice. It's a little work getting his giant ham fists through the sleeves. His arm does not want to stretch out that much. Man, what a cool look. I don't remember seeing him wear this in the Popeye cartoons. I forget what Bluto's deal is. Like, I know that he and Popeye would fight over olive oil, but was Bluto just another, like, rival sailor? Like, if olive oil wasn't around, would they just fight over how many fish they caught that day? Wow, what a look. It makes him kind of look like Kingpin from the Into the Spider-Verse movie. The jacket is like a pleather type thing, so it's simulating leather, and it looks pretty good. And they both came with a stand. This is what the stand looks like. Simple little distressed anchor motif. And now to the titular character. Popeye is decidedly smaller than Bluto. 
<laughs> Bluto's not even in the full frame when I do this. Quite the size difference. Do people ship Popeye and Bluto? Is there a ship for that? I want to know, but I'm afraid to Google it. With Popeye, we're running into a similar hat issue where it's sculpted to fit his head exactly, but the magnet is just poking out too much, so it doesn't really fit exactly. It hovers on him. Hover hat. There's just nothing not troubling about this. It's so well made, and yet why? Crazy sculpting and paint application as we saw in Bluto. Cool anchor tattoo. I commend whoever had to take Popeye's bizarre proportions and turn them into 3D form because this is just crazy weird. His, he's got like a long neck and giant double chin and there's so much wrong with it and yet so much, so much right. It's just little details in the clothing that really makes them look realistic. Like the fake buttons on the shirt and the pants and then this little seam line below the chest. Got a little sailor cape. It comes with the world's tiny pipe. You just stick that right there. I mean, even if you pull down his outfit, you can see more of the musculature underneath. Crazy collarbones. Like, is Popeye only swole in the arms? Like, the rest of his body looks a little malnourished. He looks up a lot more than Bluto because he's got a thinner neck. Neck crunched down. A little bit of tilt. Shoulder joints are a little stiff like with Bluto. And once again, the cloth gets in the way, but if it weren't for that, they could probably go wherever you wanted them to. Swivel and rotation in the forearm. Giant hunk of meat. Giant wrist joint. Not much rotation there. A little bit more rotation at the waist. Some crunch. Ooh, a lot of arc back. Maybe that's mostly in the knees, though. What? Since the legs are thinner than Bluto's, they have more of a range of movement. It's just the pants that are getting in the way. Popeye comes with a ton of stuff. He's got two alternate heads. We've got one where his mouth is just fully closed, except for where the pipe goes. And I'm just gonna stick this in right here, because I don't want this pipe to get lost anywhere. And this head where he's looking quite a bit worse for wear. Alternate hand, same as Bluto. Punching, grabbing. And then he's got a pointing hand and relaxed hands. I guess this isn't really a pointing hand, it's a push-up hand. Maybe. It can be used for both. When you do push-ups, you're really just pointing at the ground. He's got a tiny, tiny compass. Really cool detail on the front with that anchor insignia. And it opens up. Gotta be careful with that, that's very, very small. He comes with a spyglass that actually telescopes out. It's got this inset plastic, so it looks like a real spyglass. A nice antiquing on that. Of course, it wouldn't be Popeye without spinach in both crushed and uncrushed can. This looks like toxic waste or something. When I was a kid, I used to get so grossed out by this in the cartoon. I never wanted to eat spinach. I mean, no kid wants to eat spinach, but now I know it doesn't have to look like this, and you don't have to eat it from a can. You can eat fresh spinach, you guys. It's a revelation. He's got this entire tray full of pipes. Ugh! And that's why there's multiple, because they are tiny and they can get lost really super easily. I mean, one wrong move and this could just go flying all over the place and I would never find any of these. He has the uh, usual pipe that we saw and also this one that has a plume of smoke coming out of it. He's got a cool duffel bag to put all his stuff in for long trips, I guess. Popeye in the Navy? I guess he's in the Navy, isn't he? He's got an alternate knit cap for those cold ocean nights. He's got a rain hat for those rainy ocean nights. And a rain jacket! He actually comes with two extra jackets. To put these on him, you have to take off his hands because his hands are way too meaty to be sliding through these sleeves. You have to do a little work to get him in there. Now he's ready for the storm. It's even got little pockets sewn in. I would be careful with those, this though because this fabric is already tearing a little bit right here. Oh my god. Every day. And his last jacket is this cool wool looking thing to go with the nip cat. Nip cat. Knit cap. Gentle finagling. Tuck his little cape back there. This jacket looks comfy AF. And one more hat right there, like a traditional sailor boat cap. All his hats are really dirty. Bluto's clothes are dirty, but Popeye's hats are dirty. So all in all, two more great figures from Mezco. I still have so many questions. Who decided to do this? Who said it was okay? Why are they so good? These have no right to be so good. They're disturbing and ugly and terrifying, but the sculpting and paintwork is so nice. I was wondering if they were going to make an olive oil, and I think that I would rather not see a realistic olive oil. She might be scarier than <laughs> even these two. If you like Popeye, then this is definitely a set you want to have, because they look fantastic in a very bizarre, nightmarish, terrifying kind of way. I feel like I've been doing a lot of Mezcos lately. So anyway, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.